I am your brother, and we are a family of God. Uh, Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, uh, to God, the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the Father of mercy, who comforts us in all of our tribulation, that we may also comfort those who are in any trouble by the same comfort with which we are comforted. I say that because we all need some comfort in this world today because we are the church of Christ and we have a mission. And tonight, I want to encourage us. Paul says in Philippians chapter, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 11, that we are to edify one another as brothers and sisters, whether it be from up here or phone calls or going out to breakfast or dinner, we the church are supposed to be very close. So close that nobody suffers. When one member of the church suffer, all the members suffer with it. One member is honored, all the members are honored with that. There are no big eyes, little U's in the church. We all need each other. I say that with a smile. We all read the same book, and we're all students of the Bible. So let me help us tonight by building us up in the church. I want to talk about the Lord's army. Maybe you've seen pictures and read stories in history books about nations that went to war with each other. Pictures of cannons, horses, and armed soldiers fill American history books that deal with wars like the American Civil War, the Spanish-American War, and the Revolutionary War. In more recent years, pictures of missiles and tanks and grenades and planes remind us of the Gulf War or the war in Iraq. But did you know that there has been a war going on almost as long as the earth has existed? That war is between the forces of ultimate good, which are God and his followers, and the forces of evil, which are the devil and his followers. In fact, the war which, in fact, the war between good and evil is still going on today. And the Bible tells us that everyone is a faithful member of Christ's church is fighting on that in that war. Paul wrote an important message about the war to the Christians who lived in Ephesus. He told them to arm themselves with God's armor. The reason he told them to arm themselves for a fight is because they were fighting against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. Ephesians 6, verse number 12. Paul told the members of the Lord's church that they are an army fighting against strong powers of wickedness. If Christians are part of the Lord's army, what weapons can they use to defeat evil? Do they need rockets, explosives, guns, armor, knives, swords? No, the Lord's army fights with different weapons. Paul said that Christians should arm themselves with the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and carry the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, Ephesians 6, 17. Christians do not defeat evil by blowing up things, by using real weapons or guns. They defeat evil by doing good deeds, teaching God's word, resisting temptation, and helping others learn the truth. Since God is much stronger than all the forces of wickedness, he has promised the faithful fighters in his army that he will crush Satan under their feet. Let's all make sure to obey God and do right so we can be members of Christ's church and fight in his army. If you are here tonight and you are not a part of Christ's army, then you are part of Satan's army. There, are, there is no neutral ground. You're either in Christ's kingdom or you're in Satan's kingdom. We have a choice to make tonight. What would you decide by listening to God's invitation? You have to be enlisted in this army properly. You cannot pray for pardon. You cannot be sprinkled to be baptized. You can't do it your way. You got to do it Christ's appointed way. He has appointed a way for people to be saved by hearing, number one, the gospel, Romans 10, 17. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Believing Jesus is the son of God. Mark 16, 16, he that believe it and is baptized shall be saved. He that believe it not shall be damned. Repent of sins, Luke 13, 3, 
I'll tell you your name, but except you repent, shall all likewise perish. Confess Christ's name publicly. Romans 10, 10, with the heart men believe unto righteousness. With the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And then be baptized in water to have your sins washed away, calling on the name of the Lord. Then in Acts 2, 47, the Lord would add you to his church. There's only one church, you all, the church of Christ. Denominationalism came about years later, and you don't have to worry about them. Just think about who you are. Okay, all the good they're doing, so what? They're not the lost people. <laughs> you got to realize who you are and what army you're in. Then you can be faithful and have courage, and don't worry about what nobody is saying. The church of Christ cannot be defeated. The kingdom of God is invincible. It will never be destroyed. But then there are Christians like myself. Sometimes I make mistakes, brothers and sisters. I'm not perfect, but I love the Lord because he first loved me. He loves us. When I sin as a Christian, 1 John tells me if I confess my sins, he is faithful and just to forgive me of my sins. And listen to this, cleanse me from all unrighteousness. We are clean in God's sight when we walk in the light as he is in the light. That means we are striving to keep his commandments on a daily basis. Our sins are continually cleansed. There's a difference between Christians and sinners. They live after the flesh, but we walk after the spirit. There's a difference. We're not perfect. God wants us to be faithful. We don't have to be great, but faithful. We don't have to be rich, but faithful. So if you have on your mind, whatever you want to do tonight, be saved. Have your sins washed away as a sinner? And as a Christian, if you've fallen short, you want to be restored, but taught to pray one for another. The effectual, reverend prayer of a righteous man availeth much.